So in today's setup guide, we are checking out GameBase Amiga 2.3. So for those of you who's not aware, GameBase is a front-end launcher system. But today we're specifically looking at setting you up with the latest Amiga 2.3 package with this. It's going to be a very easy system to configure and I'm going to make sure of that. For those of you who's been following my channel for some time, I've gone through some very complex Amiga configurations for different emulators such as WinUAE and FSUAE and even the Nice emulator. Uh, we're going to be using WinUAE in this setup guide but trust me it's very very simple. I'm going to be going through some file editing with you to get full screen modes and to actually get your controllers working with this. This really is an awesome system and I really urge any Amiga fan to check this one out. Okay, before I start today's game base Amiga 2.3 setup guide, make sure to hit notification, subscribe and like if you like today's video, it really helps out my channel a great deal, plus it gets you retro emulation content as I release it, which is every day. So today's video has been inspired by a generous person today who donated me some money to enhance my channel, so many thanks for that. Uh, so I've covered Amiga and Commodore 64 and Commodore in general on my channel a lot. I'm a big Commodore fan as a lot of you are aware. But I've not done Game Base Amiga. I've done Game Base Commodore 64. Uh, so Game Base is a front end and uh, front end meaning that a wider range of games are easier to access. But we're going to go through that and I'm going to take you through what everything does. So we need to win you with AE for this. We need to download this. So a lot of you at this point are likely feeling freaks out because uh, when you weigh it's notorious for a lot of people uh, not quite understanding it but this setup guide is going to be very simple we don't have to mess around with win you way too much with this we also need to download game base itself if you've not already got it and we also need to download Amiga 2.3 pack but all the links are going to be in my description so first of all what we're going to do is just head over to this website and you're going to find yourself at game base amiga 2.3 and this is within the game base 64 forums the links in my description and you can find the link here to download the games and everything else and all you need to do is just download it it's going to take you to a mega site and mega it's only going to allow you to download 5 gigabyte at a time if you don't pay for it. Now, I paid for it today from my donation, which is why I asked for donations so I can do videos like this one. And it cost me, I think, £8 in the UK, that is. So, I've got this and I've got the package. So, just make sure you download that because that's crucial. And you'll find the mega link just here for this. Next up, if you don't already have Game Base installed, which I do, you need to go to gamebase64.com downloads or gb64.com downloads. And the only file you need to download here, installer file, is the Game Base front end. So just download that and it's going to download a setup for you. Now, should you get prevented from downloading it, it will say uh, unverified file. Just download unverified file. It's absolutely fine. I've used this uh, game base for a long time now and it's fine. There's no viruses. And finally, like I was saying, we need to download WinUAE. So we're going to download the 64-bit installer. And we're just going to quickly set this up. Like I say, nothing to worry about. This is very simple. So we're just going to go to next. Next. And just make sure you're pressing next all the way. We need this to go to C drive and in program folder. So install. And if you get a little window pop up saying, do you want this to allow changes to your device? Just press yes. And just press finish on that. Okay. Now, lastly, what I'm going to say is that obviously I've got game base set up and if I reinstall it, I'm going to lose my Commodore 64 setup, which I'm not prepared to do even for this setup guide. So when you install game base front end, I recommend doing exactly what I've done so you can follow this setup guide and just creating a folder on your desktop. So new folder and call this folder something like game base Amiga, for example. And when you install Game Base, 
just install it into that folder that you just created. Okie dokes. So once you have installed GameBase and it's installed into your GameBase folder, which I just mentioned, you're also going to have a couple of shortcuts on your desktop. So you're going to have GameBase and GB Toolbox. So at this point, you should have downloaded that GameBase Amiga 2.3 package, which weighs in at around 8.32 gigabyte. But we need to extract this. And once you have extracted this, you're going to end up with this folder, Amiga 2.3. And inside this folder, you've got all the folders and all the files you need for this setup guide. Everything is there for you. So what we're going to do is just drag that Amiga 2.3 folder into that folder that you've installed GameBase into. Next up, what we're going to do is just double left click on GameBase. Now, like I say, because I've got Commodore 64 already set up on GameBase front end, I've got the option just here when I open up GameBase. I can either now select Amiga 2.3 or I can go for my Commodore 64 or Sinclair ZX Spectrum. But obviously this is for Amiga. Now, if you've not installed GameBase before, you won't have this option, I wouldn't have thought, up here. So you should boot straight into your Amiga configuration, which I'm going to do now. And here we go. So everything's set up for you. And we've even got the option to load games in WHD loads. WHD load is a very quick way of playing Amiga games. So rather than messing around with ADF files and swapping disks, WHD load games are compressed into one folder or rather one archive. So you don't have to keep swapping disks around. So what I'm going to do is just open up a game and just make sure that WinUA in the background is also now running with this. So randomly 1000cc turbo. And here we go. Okay, so as you've seen just then, uh, we had the windowed version of WinUA open up, but we're going to go into how to get that into full screen. But first of all, I'm just going to give you a walk around uh, GameBase. So a really cool feature GameBase has, so if you go up to View and just go down to Category window, this is going to open up a little window here. And if you left click on this, you can then select different categories for your game collection. So, for example, one of my favorite features, especially for C64, is years. If I go to years, just scroll down until we get to the 80s, or in fact, I'm going to go to the 90s era of Amiga. If I click on 1991, it's going to show us all the games which was released in 1991. Uh, so Commodore Amiga games commercially ended in 94. So let's check out 1994. And this is the games released for Commodore Amiga in 1994. So still considering the end of Amiga, a fair few games are released in 94. Uh, if we go to the 1980s, say around 87, 88. We're going to find a lot of classics in there around 1987-ish. Um, but for Amiga fans out there, you'll probably know your years. Uh, just like I know years for Commodore 64 games as well, those things. And if we go back to categories again, uh, we can go down to something like publishers. We've got to publishers. If there's an Ocean Software game you're looking for, just look up O. And as you know, there's lots of publishers during the microcomputer era uh, to a penny. Lots have been forgotten about, but some are still remembered. Uh, so we got Ocean Software. So this is uh, your release list of Ocean Software titles. Robocop 3, Toki, uh, Whizball, big popular games here. Now, interestingly, what we can do with this is not only go into view category window, which is a really cool feature, but on the side here, you're going to find we got WHD load. Uh, so like I was saying, WHD loads quickly loads our games without having to swap disks and files around. So we load up the games through that method, which is really cool. You'll also notice that when you click on some of the games, you've got extras just here. If you left click on that, 
you can then take a look at more detailed imagery of the game. So, for example, we've got Sleepwalker just here, uh, which, to my knowledge, was one of the last released games on the Commodore 64. Not sure if that applied to Amiga as well. Uh, but if we go to Cover Scan Front, that's going to open up Image Viewer, and here's the original artwork for the Amiga 1200 version of Sleepwalker. Uh, again, if we go to Extras, uh, Cover Scan Back, we can then see the back side of the box, which is pretty cool. And instructions also, that's going to open up in a PDF uh, viewer of some kind. In my case, it's opened up in a text document file. So uh, you've got all your instructions here and some Amiga games will probably require you uh, to read instructions, especially for tank simulators and uh, flight simulators on Amiga. Pretty complex uh, simulators, some of those on Amiga. So other things we've got here, if we go to Gmuse or Gemios, which is hit the top and I can't pronounce that one. If we go to WinUAE, uh, if you get any problems booting up your games, I find that just by checking use defaults will take that problem away and just go to OK it. So any games which don't boot up, just make sure to check use defaults. You don't need to mess around with anything else here. But like you can see, in my case, they're open up fine without that being checked. Let's just open up Robocop 3. Now, Robocop 3 was a mouse and keyboard game. And of course, we got all the crack copies just here. So, uh, Robocop 3, terrible film, but the Robocop 3 game on Amiga wasn't too bad. It's very advanced for its time. So, as it also says at the top of the window, it says press Alt and Tab to exit window mode. Uh, you'll find once you open this up, you won't see your cursor. So very cinematic stuff. Like I said, this game was really ahead of its time. I remember playing this back in the day and uh, I was pretty blown away by the realism at the time in it. So if you had Robocop 3 or if you've got Robocop 3, you'll know this game comes with several floppy disks. But because we're using WHD load, we don't need to mess around with all those uh, loading up different disks. Thank you. 
So one of the last things I'm going to show you what to do is how to get your games in full screen. So rather than that annoying Windows mode, like I've just had Robocop 3 in, uh, what we need to do is go to the game base folder, which you would have installed game base into, like I suggested doing, and just go into your Amiga 2.3 folder. And here you're going to find game base Amiga.uae. If you just right click on this and open it with notepad, there's a particular bit of text here that we need to edit. So this text document is GFX full screen, and this can do your eyes in just looking for this. Now here it is. So we got GFX underscore full screen underscore Amiga equals false. It says true just here, but when you open this for the first time, it's going to say false. So what you need to do is backspace false, or just delete it, whatever, and just type in true. And whilst we're here in this text document, uh, for people out there who want to make more of a full screen with adjusting your width and your height from the window or full screen mode, you can do this just here. So for example, uh, we got full screen just here, which is width of 800 and height. Is it 600 so obviously you can put this to whatever dimensions you want just you know make sure that it's going to fit the screen that you're going to be playing this on so just make sure also that once you've made these changes we go to file and save now the next thing you would have noticed just now or maybe you wouldn't have noticed because you can't see me uh, we don't actually have joystick or controller input right now, but I'm going to show you how to do that. So if we open up game base one last time. What we're going to do to enable controller input is go up to GMUSE at the top. And from here, we're going to go to WinUAE. And you're going to find GMUSE script just here. Make sure this one is actually selected to game base Amiga joystick dot text. And if you just load that and then OK it, the next time you boot up a game, not only are you going to get full screen at the dimensions that you've entered into that text document, but you should also find that your controller is now working with this and you can also access a virtual keyboard. So I'm going to just open up the game and test this. So as you can see just here, I'm using an Xbox controller and I'm pressing Y to bring up a virtual keyboard and using D-pad to go around those virtual keyboard keys. And that's it for today's Game Base Amiga 2.3 setup guide. So as you can see, it's not overly complex like setting up something like WinUAE and adding all sorts of different files. Uh, quite a simple setup guide, and that's why I did this one for today. So if you're new to my channel, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe, and like. Also, feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And I'm always accepting donations so I can do videos just like this one today so i can give you my subscribers and passers by new content so anyways until next time stay retro